Carl Hammond. Man, I'm glad to have you here as part of my podcast. Pleasure to be here. I don't remember a time when I have tried to talk to you that you haven't been absolutely swamped. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. The fire department's been keeping me going lately. Oh, gosh. I didn't even think about that. Oh, yeah. And hopefully just with fires. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Everything? Yeah. Pretty much. But it's uh, that's been the higher priority lately. Mm -hmm. um, just because the business hasn't had much happening because of the situation. Yeah, the drum corps thing, that was a huge hit. It was. My first quarter is dominated every year with drum corps. Mm -hmm. And we had gotten a bunch of those orders out, but we also had a bunch of them still sitting there. We feel for the drum corps. Absolutely. I mean, right. it, it, that was such a devastating thing all around, but we really feel for all those kids that weren't able to march. And it, it, it had a big effect on our business, but we certainly mm -hmm. are well aware that it had a big effect on a great number of people out there. I've got good friends who are photographers for the Indiana State Marching Contest. And of course, that whole season just got canceled. Yes. So and it's, it's, you name the industry, you name the vendor, right? It's what a hit. It's yeah, just, it's, it, I'd say the music industry is one of the worst industries devastated by this. I feel for every one of those people, one of those people out there waiting for the next call for the gig or right. you know, the drum corps getting right. moving again. It's yeah, yeah, devastating. I was trying to think how I first found out about you. And it was, I was sitting next to Bob Wood <laughs> in an Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra rehearsal. And at, at almost at halftime, at intermission or, or at break for a rehearsal, Bob goes, hey, check out this mouthpiece. And I played it a little bit and I'm like, I need to get one of these, never heard of Hammond. And so he gave me your number. I think I called you as soon as I finished rehearsal and said, can you overnight me one of these? <laughs> and that was, and I don't even remember what year that was, but a uh, long time ago, long time ago. And, 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 a, and a little bit of money ago, I've, uh, <laughs> I've helped put your kid through college. It's not been that much, but <laughs> you've done your share. Come on. It's great product. You, you do, you. Uh, you do really great work. And I, it still blows me away. Of course, we'll get to this, but it still blows me away that you do it without a, that you can do it by hand and be so consistent. That is, it's just remarkable. First off, Indiana, Indianapolis, uh, Indiana has been a great market for us because we did get in with the, the symphony down there and mm -hmm. Indiana University. And that was one of the first big markets that I really got into. And it's been a lasting effect mm -hmm. made a lot of friends down there too mm -hmm. any enemies oh <laughs> only a few, <laughs> only a few. <laughs> yeah and i remember making a couple of a couple of road trips either myself or i think maybe i brought a couple of students with me one time mm -hmm. and that you allowed us to come in and see the process was very cool no but not everybody gets the opportunity to see that sort of thing, that sort of operation up close. It's like going to the Bach factory, the summer factory for the first time and watching things get done that way or watching Fred Powell work on his stuff. It's Everybody, behind the scenes. Yeah, the industry is wide open. Everybody's got their ways of doing things mm -hmm. and that's what makes us all individual. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask some questions to that I really don't know the answer to. And these aren't like off topic. There are no history questions. These are all industry related. Are you a trumpet player? Were you a trumpet player? I played trumpet and uh, played piano. I can't believe I never thought to ask that question. I just assumed you were such a cool guy. You had to be a trumpet player. I got to play trumpet for a lot longer than I ever thought I would. Mm -hmm. uh, went through college as a music business major, but it was just, it, I managed to keep the, the playing going on. Even when I was down at Warburton, I was playing down in Orlando mm -hmm. area. You know, that was an unexpected high point to get asked to play some jobs. And that carried on when I moved back to Chicago mm -hmm. and got to freelance for close to 20 years, I think. Nice. So I got to maintain it until it just got so busy at the shop. 
Sure. I always tell people when I get called for a gig, it was like cramming for a test, trying to get ready for the yeah, right. no, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. Well, what school did you go to that had a music business degree? Western Illinois University. And had you already had an inkling that this is the, the path you were going to take? In all honesty, I went to Western Illinois University as a pre-med major my, with the, the hope of always of going into one of my favorite shows growing up was Quincy. Oh, yeah. I love that show. So, yeah. Still the medical examiner thing. I right. that ended first semester. And when I realized, yeah, so I switched over to music <laughs> business and moved on from there. Mm-hmm. You know what, I, I'm not trying to be funny, but I see parallels, right, between being a, a, a doctor. <laughs> no, think about this for a second. The amount of detail that goes into what you do and the analysis of problems, somebody's chops, and then the craft, you're trying to find a cure <laughs> for whatever is going on with somebody's chops or their horn, right? Sure. I, mean, I see a lot of parallels there. That, I don't know if you're making the same kind of money as you would a neurosurgeon, but uh, no. but do you see what I mean, though? The you, You're still getting to work with your hands. Yeah, it's an examination at times. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so Warburton, how long had you been with, with Terry? I went to Terry for an internship right out of school, so I was with him for that summer, mm -hmm. and then I stayed on with him for another couple of years. Mm -hmm. So uh, about two and a half years total, mm -hmm. some of the most important times in my whole career. Yeah. I owe a deal to Terry Warburton and Kenny Titmus down there mm -hmm. in Florida. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the best times, in fact, I just wrote that this morning, Terry was celebrating 40 years in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Three years ago, I was working for you. Wow. Yeah, I'm getting to talk to Terry next week. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, good. Yeah. And I think Kim's going to be in on that as well. <laughs> was it just mouthpieces? Early on, or was he even building horns at that point? Or was or were the horns the first thing? Uh, it was mouthpieces, and we were still exploring the, the instrument option. Mm -hmm. He had been, he's always talked about doing that. Mm -hmm. So when he finally accomplished it, uh, it was a happy moment for me too, because I know it was his dream. <laughs> now, when you left Warburton, was it to go do mouthpieces or something instrument-wise yeah. elsewhere? Nisa and I were married in 91, mm -hmm. and she, right out of college, got a job as a flight attendant with Delta Airlines. So immediately was based down in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the time, at that moment in time, she was, she got the option of heading back to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And Terry was instrumental in getting me in at Chilkey. Mm -hmm. So there was not a lot of downtime at that mm -hmm. point. He called mm -hmm. up Brent Schoke and said, I got this guy for you, and moved from there. Now, you say Rent, he was still alive at that point? Rent Schoke Jr. Uh, okay, okay. I uh, didn't know there was a junior, so. Rent Schoke died in 83, 82 or 83, so mm -hmm. I, I did not meet him. So there was no, I'm assuming, a non-compete. Were you, was Terry worried that you were going to take all the industry secrets elsewhere? Terry doesn't worry. <laughs> no, no, of course not. No. Yeah. I just wonder sometimes, right, this happens. You switch uh, employers within an industry and they say, you can't do this for a while. Right. So, yes. I, I have heard that. We didn't have to worry about that. That's cool. So with Shulky, were you doing kind of the same thing? When I first got to Shulky for the first few years, I was fitting valves, aligning slides, buffing, do it all, mm -hmm. doing some mouthpieces, but I didn't get into the mouthpieces until a few years later when Scott Lasky mm -hmm. moved on to do his own business. Mm -hmm. So then I moved into running the mouthpiece department and doing customs, just dealing with production in the mouthpiece side of things. Yeah. And see, already you start to hear names, Warburton, Hammond, Lasky, and I'm sure we're going to talk about some others. It's like everybody goes through this central or went through some central manufacturers right right yeah um scott i was close with scott i i felt that i was closest with him when we would golf because then it was there was no mouthpieces involved it was uh -huh. just, 
out having a good time. And yeah. he was a blast. He was a great guy. Yeah. I Has it been it. a year? Two years? What, how long has it been since he uh, passed away? I think it's been two years. Has it really? Yeah. Wow. His son, horn player, uh, mm -hmm. plays up in the Fort Wayne Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. And uh, super quiet guy. I, maybe it's that horn player mentality, but... Some people would say he didn't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned yeah, Shilke. You mentioned Shilke, and I remember when I, first, when I first discovered that there was more than a Bundy cornet, which was in my hands. And then I got to high school, and there somebody had a Bach Strad. <gasps> Stradivarius. And then somebody had a Shilke. Well, for some reason... Even the name Shilke sounded really sexy to me. It's, I gotta have this. And it was a gorgeous horn. And the, I think this still had, even early on, the, they weren't the round valve caps. They had the hat. It was just something very cool about that. Vinny DiMartino had a four valve E flat. And it was like, oh, that's the coolest thing. I know Shilke's still around, but it's interesting to see this evolution from, we all we had back then were, it's like Getson, Shilke, Bach, Yamaha, and yeah, but they weren't what they are today by any stretch. Well, but, I, was a, uh, I was a Bach player in college, but my view of what Shulky was, I played Bach, but if I really wanted something, I would have to reach real <laughs> high to get to, to, to mm -hmm. get Shulky. That mm -hmm. was always my impression of the Shulky company. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're still around. Mm -hmm. Is Junior still running the, the show? At Shulky? No. Yeah. Shortly before I left Shulky, Ren and Joan, Shulky, brother and sister, mm -hmm. sold the company to Andrew Nauman. He is the oh. he's, he's the owner right now. I didn't know that. And the yeah, guy that makes the the natural trumpets, Pat yeah. Nauman. Yeah. Yeah. Is production still in? Honestly, I, I have no idea about that. All I know is that they are still around and they are still producing great product. Yeah. I think Allison Balsam, a very high profile player who uh, endorses Shilke mm -hmm. or vice versa. Yeah. So Warburton to Shilke, what happened after that? Yeah, that's when I started my own. So I've what? been on my own for <clears throat> 15 years now. So longer uh, than I was at wow. Shilke and Warburton combined now. Wow. I'm heading into my 30th year in the industry. Holy cow. Yeah. Maybe you should go pro at some point. Maybe I need to learn how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't you and Fred have a shop together for a little bit? Yeah, Fred uh, have, I, I first met Fred back in 91. I mm -hmm. was at Warburton, he was with Roy Lauer. And so we got to know each other then. So we've always had a connection. Somebody at one point said, these Hammond mouthpieces work really great in these Powell trumpets. And so <laughs> it, from that point, it's been a, it's been a, a joint effort, though mm -hmm. we're not joint, but sure. we always work together, always help each other out. He's been there for me. I've been there for him. I owe a great deal to Fred Powell. Mm -hmm. He makes some pretty darn good horns too. Yes, he does. I have one sitting at the shop. Yeah. I got to go up to his place, it might have been about a year ago, to do the interview. And it was a day that the power was out in his shop. And so we're sitting in the dark with the door open. It's the only light we had coming in and, and guys coming in with equipment trying to fix things. And anyways, it, it was... You with his eyes closed anyway. So yeah. Mean... Yeah. Holy cow. 15 years. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And I still haven't seen... I have seen the new shop, but I haven't seen it all... Have you been uh, into the newest one? I I don't know. What, have I been here six years or something? Yeah, I think I was in there before you had everything finished. Yeah, it's it's a lot nicer now. We yeah. got accused of having the homeless look. So mm -hmm. now you walk up to the place, and it's a music shop. So <laughs> Got yeah. some signage and everything. Yeah. So could you really have imagined that you'd still be doing this? <sighs> It still boggles my mind. It really does. Going, obviously, it was part of the plan with the mu music business major and all this stuff, but it still amazes me at times that when we get an order from South Korea or, hmm. or sending something to the Moscow Symphony or... It's a, 
why are they buying my stuff? It's humbling. We appreciate every single one of them that goes, that's purchased. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny that you say, you talk about the international connection, and it's still interesting to me that there's such a regional aspect to, to I don't want to say a smaller business. There's a difference between Yamaha and a design, global. Exactly. And, but in this region, Illinois, Indiana, and I would imagine north around there, everybody knows you. But when I was down in Tennessee last semester, people were like, it's Pickett and Steve, oh gosh, Steve Patrick. Patrick mouthpieces, and it's, they had never heard of Hammond before. I'm like, why don't you try some of my mouthpieces here? But it's interesting, too. There's a loyalty, right? <laughs> There's sure. a loyalty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, Chicago was uh, Shulky, Lasky, and Hammond. No, I, I get it 100%. Peter's got his his customers. Bob Reeves have got his out there. Mm -hmm. and We all spread out across the globe. Yeah. You know, but we do have our home base. Yeah. And it's amazing to show up at an ITG conference and to see all the makers there and it's think, and, and to think, how is there room for another mouthpiece maker? Somebody would say, why, how is there room for another podcast? <laughs> 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 but when you got good product, right? And you have good product and you can back it up. Yeah. The music industry is not a huge industry, so mind your P's and Q's sometimes, but. Now, wait a minute. Why do you say that, that it's not a huge industry? Well, it's the band and, band and orchestra side of it is probably not as big as other areas of the industry, but there's not a whole lot of guys around the world making mouthpieces, or there's not a whole guys like Fred making instruments and trying to make a living doing that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's an industry that allows it if you're really willing to work at it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's probably no different than any other industry. The music industry is what I know. Mm -hmm. So when you decided to go out on your own, well, it's scary, like... Scary, scary. It, right? <laughs> it's, you know, do you have any customer base at that point? Do you have any idea of marketing? Do you have any idea of how to navigate what is in front of you? <clears throat> I had become, I had a little bit of a name within the industry. Mm -hmm. Back when I was at the very beginning with Terry, we, that's when we developed the series eighties, the, the heavyweight backboards. Mm -hmm. So we did a whole bunch of testing with the guys from Disney coming in and playing different diameters. And mm -hmm. that's when Terry and I developed the anchor grip mouthpieces. So the really thin profile rims, mm -hmm. those were something that I worked on developing and my name ended up being in his brochure, which carried a little bit of weight. Sure. More so that it had Warburton on it than mine. Mm -hmm. um, but then moving on to Shulky, taking over for Scott helped out a lot too. Mm -hmm. because back in those days, it was me and one other person that mostly dealt with the customers coming into the door. Mm -hmm. you know, I think when I left and started the business, I had some customers that had worked with me in the past and came over to the business and luckily we treated them good, made a good impression and that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. The evolution, yeah, you look at a mouthpiece and you think, no, to the lay person, right? You think, how different can they be? <laughs> But then you look at the evolution, uh, The you mentioned the heavyweight, the low prof profile rim, the Megatone that Bach came out with and all these other iterations. It's, it still comes down to just how do you sound? How good do you sound on the mouthpiece? How comfortable is that mouthpiece mm -hmm. to be able to produce what you're looking for it to produce? Yeah. I, I always say that Mouthpieces have been made for a long time. There's rarely anything that's 100% brand new out there that yeah. somebody hasn't done or whittled away at once long ago. You know, bowl-shaped cups versus V-shaped cups. That's always been there. So <laughs> I'm sure you've seen these before. It's, it's like a Parduba double cup, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, you know, and the profile on that, <laughs> this is huge. A regular mouthpiece doesn't take up near that much space on my chops, but... I actually picked this up a couple of weeks ago thinking, 
I want to try it again. It actually plays really well, but it's just, I, I don't know. I'd have to have somebody like you measure the inside diameter on that, and it, it feels like a bucket. Would that make it be better? <laughs> no, I mean, it, knowing that doesn't make it in, in any difference. I'm just curious. You want to be more educated, correct? Not really. <laughs> Not really. No, I say that, but it's, if it sounds good, does it really matter if you know the, the dimensions? Sometimes too much information is, 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 is bad. Yeah. But one thing I'm always impressed with is that people come armed with information mm -hmm. and they know exactly what they're looking for. And mm -hmm. sometimes that makes my job really easy. Mm -hmm. And then somebody like me walks in and, and I have no clue about the throat. I have no clue. <laughs> What's that? I didn't name names. Yeah, I am, you know, but, but I've never been one of those guys that could tell you bore size and throw it all that with the dimensions on a trumpet or a mouthpiece. It's just not been my but thing. What have I, but what have I always said to you? Once you get that rim that you like stay in that area, and then we can develop everything else past. Yeah. Once you find some, your home base, yeah, then you're good to go. Yeah, that two rim for me is, is home base. Mm -hmm. And then I've got a, a lot of iterations, you know, or cup shapes, throats around that. Yeah. There are a lot of iterations down in Indianapolis. Yeah. That's actually a good word. I'm glad I used that today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The current state of affairs, everything's slow. It's been trying. Yeah. And we, again, I'll say it again, we are 100% aware of all those musicians out there that are struggling right now and we feel for them. Yeah. Um, we've been trying to work with a lot of the drum corps that order from us too. Currently, um, Anissa came up with a plan where she sent emails to all the cores that we've worked with because the, the cores that I work with, I usually have stamps made of their logo. Mm -hmm. So it individualizes their mouthpieces. So we've been, we offered up if they, their fan base, whoever it is, they want to order a, a say a blue coat's mouthpiece. Oh, yeah. We'll stamp their mouthpiece and everything's going off. We'll stamp their mouthpiece with the blue coats and then their initials. And then we will give 25% back to the core. Oh, nice. It's not going to add up to a whole lot, but it's something that we feel we need to do. Sure. Um, times are tough mm -hmm. currently mm -hmm. right now in this industry. Yeah. I did drum core back in the day mm -hmm. and Star of Indiana. Star of Indiana. And it's, I remember, it's, it, I, you hated to age out. You hated to get to the point where you couldn't do it anymore. And so I know I've actually got a student right now at UND who wasn't, I don't think he was going to age out this year. But, of course, now he's going to get another year on top of it because I think they're going to, DCI is going to grandfather people out or in, as it were. But a summer without drum corps a fall without marching band, that's... It's hard. It's hard. And it's freakishly different, right? What are we going to do? And, and football, with football games, high school, college football games, what's going to well, happen? And I think back on high school, and, and I'll tell you what, band was my release. Mm -hmm. you, know, you had all these pressures of school going on and everything. I, I couldn't wait to get to band just to enjoy life. I, f I feel for every one of those musicians out there and mm -hmm. it's difficult we're our sales are way down right now but at this point we're more concerned about the individual musicians out yeah there. yeah you'll survive and well, i hope others i hope everybody survives but there there will be i, I kind of wonder if some cores or some other small businesses that are related to some photographers might go out of business because of this but you had asked earlier about what I meant about the industry is small. I think within this industry, we have a pretty tight knit group of companies that are all friends too. Mm -hmm. And we all look after each other, check in on each other. The music industry will survive, but it's being tried. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So let me ask, I uh, switch gears just a little bit an, an ideal day for you in the shop. What's that look like? Huh, which day? No phone calls, uh, right? No, nobody. Is it just a solitude? 
Solitude, yes. That's one of the reasons why I did take on the fire department too, because <laughs> working in the shop by myself can be long. Mm -hmm. So getting off to the fire department, working with people, and then coming back, I feel refreshed and I can continue making what I need to make. Yeah. Um, usually it's sitting down and figuring out what I need to be making, what I need to be producing and setting a schedule for the week and then ramming through it as much as we can so that we mm -hmm. can get to the platers. We have a silver plater we utilize in Chicago. So pretty close. Um, mm -hmm. When I get a batch done, I take it down there. A week later, I go to pick it up. Mm -hmm. So it's a routine. Yeah. We fit in customers where we can. Yeah. I remember seeing those like egg carton trays of mouthpieces, yep. both ready to go. And I guess they had come, just come back. Uh, yeah, it's a process. Everybody's got their process. Mm -hmm. We've become a heck of a lot more efficient than we ever used to be. Mm -hmm. Some of those early days you were talking about, uh, yeah, you weren't getting anything overnighted to you because <laughs> it wasn't made and it wasn't going to be made in probably a good week or two. We are in a heck of a lot better shape nowadays mm -hmm. than, we mm -hmm. have, than we used to be. We've come a long way from the beginning. Yeah. So the fire department... How long have you been involved there? And you're the captain now, is that right? Uh, 10 years. I'm a lieutenant. Yeah. Sorry, I think I just promoted you, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. I enjoy the fire department. It, Like I said, it's, it's very close to the shop. So uh, if I get the urge, mm -hmm. call comes through, I'll head out and go do a call. And then mm -hmm. come back and continue what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Fire department, I will admit, the last few months has been the higher priority mm -hmm. uh, with the EMS and because I'm also an EMT also. So the demand was a greater demand than the shop at the time. So. An EMT first? Hmm? Did you become an EMT first? I, after joining the department, I became an EMT. Mm-hmm. If the mouthpiece thing doesn't work out, not that you'd want to be full time, but that you know, there's I no lack of things to do. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just curious. It's like when people have side gigs. Not that the fire department is a side gig, but holy cow, had there been a desire to do that sort of thing early on, or how did you manage to get into that? I think there's always been an interest, just never jumped in. But mm -hmm. I, I credit Anissa for that one because I think she he saw that I was, as Matt Hilton would say, the troll in the uh, back of the shop, <laughs> making mouthpieces, the whittling away, getting better. <laughs> so getting out and when I had the opportunity to join the fire department, mm -hmm. she was the instigator on that one. For sure. Is it a volunteer fire department? It's POC, so paid on call. Mm -hmm. I am currently considered part-time. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I knew you were a firefighter. I didn't know to what extent. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. So now I'm curious, somebody walks into your shop. There is, some people are going to know exactly what they want. I think you've told me, maybe I shouldn't mention names, but some people from the CSO might walk in and tell you exactly what they want. And then somebody like me walks in, I don't know, Put a hole in each end just make sure i can get air through it you've got to deal with all these different different things is it still some trial and error or do you feel like now almost immediately how to get something oh at times but i will never say it's easy but there always has to be dialogue because you have to have a conversation okay what are you playing now what don't you like about what you're playing how are you wanting to sound play for me Play, stand in front of me and play. Let's hear, what, let's hear how you sound. Mm -hmm. I always encourage people bringing books and stuff so they can mm -hmm. stand, at, stand and play mm -hmm. for me unless they have stuff memorized or whatever. I think you have to find where their home base is and where they want to go. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they'll say, I need a custom mouthpiece. Okay, let's go through these stock pieces here first. And more times than not, they end up going with the stock. Mm -hmm. uh, as they, but customs certainly at times are what's needed. Mm -hmm. uh, but my goal is to not spend as much of their money as possible. I'd like them to go ahead and check out the line first. Right. If, because I think what that does is the more stuff that they play in front of me, 
the more differences I hear, and it gives me more of a target to shoot for. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was going to ask, but I, I don't want you to throw anybody under the bus. Anybody ever just, that's it, I give up. You can't, <laughs> nothing's working. I, I could count on on one hand, but there have there have been times when I've said, I think you sound great on the piece you have. <laughs> Honestly, mm -hmm. they've walked out playing their piece. Mm -hmm. um, some people may think I'm totally nuts for that, but <laughs> it's not my job to destroy the person. Yeah. It, you know, if they're coming in just exploratory, hey, what do you got? You know what? You sound pretty damn good on what mm -hmm. you have. Mm -hmm. uh, you could play this, but I don't know that you're going to be 100% happy. So. Yeah. So is the majority of it, I want to play higher? That's what the shows are about. <laughs> what do you got that plays your double you know, plays double c not a single one of them um, yeah it's every itg conference there's that guy playing the double a on every trumpet yeah it's there yeah <laughs> and some of them do sound pretty good yeah, the ironic pretty cool. thing was at, at a itg a few years ago uh, one of those guys was standing right next to the schmute table and the the guy says i've been trying to sell him one of these mutes all day long but so what's in the what's in the near future are you you looking at any new products any anything and you've already played one chuck parish oh yeah that's, that's a really nice mouthpiece that's the a new signature piece that that we're working on mm -hmm. with thoughts of putting that in different diameters the jay friedman line i believe is going to be expanded for the trombone players out there where we can get those in different diameters also. Mm -hmm. And then I am also looking at doing some expansion of the tuba line. Mm -hmm. This reminds me, I remember maybe you were still only doing trumpet mouthpieces. Maybe you had done one or two trombone or non-trumpet mouthpieces. But you, I remember you feeling reluctant <laughs> about branching out but holy cow now they're well, as popular as trumpet mouthpieces right yeah trumpet and trombone are pretty much 50 50 right now mm -hmm. maybe even a little bit more trombone mm -hmm. and the mellow mouthpiece that's the big hit the with the drum course is, is in a spot by itself mm -hmm. i produce more of those in a year than i ever dreamed i would <laughs> I, I, I will say that 6MP is a piece that, you know, and believe me, I thought long and hard when I was making it, mm -hmm. that one I'll say I did right. Yeah. I think I did them all right. Oh, I, I think you did. But the 6MP is the one where, you know, when Matt Hilton came to me and said, you want to make a mellophone mouthpiece for the blue coats? I don't know much about mellophone, <laughs> but I made the piece and it turned out, hey, this is great. Mm -hmm. And it's been history. Mm -hmm. I, I've produced more mellophone mouthpieces than I ever dreamed I would. So do you still hand turn every one of those? Yes, I do. That is unfathomable to me. I get some help with the machine shops. They do a little bit of starting for me, but otherwise I, I do, I, my hands touch them. Yes. Holy cow. That's impressive. Thank you. Yeah. And again, the consistency, it's, I've played several different two MLs and two MLXs and they're the same. And that's, I think that's great because I can remember playing a bunch of different three C's, you know, Bach three C's that this is one, and this is another, and not to, I'm not trying to diss any part of the industry. I'm just trying to say, Hey, Carl, your product is great. <laughs> I think the whole industry is, has really elevated itself. For sure, yeah. in that respect. Yeah. See, th that's where I think competition drives excellence. Oh. And, and if you're not going to try to innovate and really get good, you're just going to get swallowed up. Well, and that's the thing is the competition is good. Yeah. So if I expect to maintain myself in this industry, I have to work as hard as everybody else. Yeah. I'm affiliated with Eastman and Shires. Mm -hmm. And I've had my own students say, oh, you're just going to try to sell me an Eastman and Shires. I said, no. I said, I want you to get a great horn for you. So I want you to go try every horn you possibly can. Yeah. And if it happens to be an Eastman or Shires, great. It's like you. You want them to walk out with the best possible mouthpiece, right? That's great experience. Mm -hmm. I 
we've had just a few chances to chat, and I was very grateful that you came down to that trumpet event back in November. That was, it was well done. Thank you. Congrats on that. Thank you. And I tell you, it may be one of the last events for the foreseeable future, right? I wonder what the state of, of conferences are going to be like. Yeah, a lot of them are already getting canceled for next year, so we'll see. Mid Midwest was a big hit for a lot of people. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Pleasure. I've enjoyed every bit of it. Thanks. Uh, I wish you the best. I hope you guys stay healthy. Thank you, Larry, and you too. And, uh, thank you, and hopefully we'll see each other at another event somewhere. That would be nice.